Okay, this is the Average Fells Podcast. I hope you got your coffee ready. Let's talk some business. I had a vision of success and where I wanted to be. And I had never, I had never owned my own business. I had never worked for myself. And when I was ready, I told him, you know, I'm sorry I had to leave your company, but I need to start my own, my own dream. Because it's a business. We're a business too. Right. Like, invest in yourself. You know, don't, don't just... I mean, they replaced the refrigerator with, like, one of those fancy coffee makers. Hey, good morning. Welcome to another episode of the Average Fells Podcast. I'm your host, Zodi Zach, coming to you live all the way from Riverside, California, on another beautiful Monday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, it's Monday afternoon. Getting this episode up a little late, but um, I'm glad to be bringing it to you. I think there's nothing but value this episode. <laughs> Bonus word, value. Look out, guys. <laughs> um, anyways, hey, if you haven't already, stop by the website, www.averagefells.com, for your specialty craft roast coffee. Yeah, that's right. You can get a four-ounce bag specialty craft roast coffee with notes of honey, fig, and tobacco. This stuff is this is primo stuff i don't know what to tell you except for it's primo okay um check it out we also got the one-time purchase which is the 1999 bag and we'll ship that directly to your door so check that out www.averagefellows.com if you need any sort of web solution uh if you need some graphics made if you need a website build check us out we also offer those services as well all right guys so we got it done in less than a minute that's right 51 seconds i am so good at it Ooh. <laughs> Nothing but value here at the Average Fells Podcast, all right? All right, so today we have a really awesome episode for you guys. I'm joined with uh, with two friends of mine that have been on the podcast before recently, uh, and and this is an ongoing topic that I want to keep, a, a conversation I want to keep having on the t- podcast, which is a general chat basically about web traffic, how the internet works in general, and this platform I want to sort of shape is a space for us to sort of throw out some questions and try to find an answer uh, with like-minded individuals who might have uh, some commonality in, in, in our ideas of like web traffic or something, something that's useful to us as individuals. Uh, I'm producing my own content. I'm putting stuff out there on the internet. I'm really curious how's the, it, how the internet works in general. I'm an average fellow. So this is an opportunity for me to give some feedback and to also uh, receive some feedback. So, you know, I'm glad to bring that to the table. Anyways, today, guys, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, introduce ourselves, fellas. Let's go and start with you, with you over here, Mark. Hey, um, I'm Mark. Uh, I'm a data analyst, and I primarily work out of R um, for automation and analytics. And I recently got into my, my job position, started to gear more towards marketing analytics. So I'm hoping to get some insight here as well. And I'm Daniel Sove Rogan. I'm currently a growth marketing specialist um, at Espresso, which is a B2B uh, system as a software company. Um, my background is entirely in startups. Actually, originally it was with like uh, wearable displays and technology. It was all sort of popping out around the time of Google Glass. Um, and with that, we had some crowdfunding stuff that we were doing. A lot of it then we just didn't have enough people to do anything we needed to do. So I came up uh, baptism by fire, just learning to do what I could do. And now I'd say I'm mostly like one of those little gremlins that follows you around the internet and knows what you're looking at. And this is giving you ads. Um, so I apologize for that. But some of it is very interesting, I hope. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, man, I'm so glad that you guys are here this morning. Uh, man, this is going to be a great chat. So uh, once again, I just kind of want to pick us up on the conversation that we kind of left off on. Um, we were chatting about... Um, We were talking about web traffic, uh, more specifically uh, content related uh, um, things um, and how content translates and how you can look at your analytics and uh, this sort of kind of where we were talking about, right? Is that right, Mark? Is that correct? Yeah, we were kind of digging into um, how you can connect, how you can theme, like, you know, everybody has a theme, right? If they're a content producer, but how you can connect to your theme to what's trending and actually get people to catch on to get that hook. Um, especially for your target demographics. I think that's what we were getting into as well. Uh, yeah, does that sound right to you, Zach? That, that sounds, okay, that, that's that's right. And one of the things you had mentioned that I thought I would try or experiment with, uh, we had talked about um, looking at testing different things doesn't necessarily have to be um, so scientifically like tracked that you could, it could just be pick something new and then execute it and and look at what happens right and um one of the things that i i decided to do was to try different content formats over the weekend over the week you know just try different formats of the content on the platforms and i was like i don't usually venture out of my box that i've carved in the last like four months i've kind of 
stood and like kind of triangled myself into a spot. And I just thought, well, why not try different things? And I had an opportunity to try an Instagram reel. And I had an Instagram reel reach 1,200 views, which is not not normal for me. Typically, my reels are like 200 views, 300 views if they're good. And this one mm-hmm. reached 1,200 views. And it was completely different content than I'd ever done before, completely random content. And just seeing how it reacted and how it was like, it, it sort of, it was strange. It was really weird. I don't know what to make of it. But that's something that I discovered over the weeks, <laughs> just trying something new, you know, trying to implement something that we've brought to the table here uh, on, on the Monday morning uh, episodes. Daniel, I kind of picked up an ep- I played an episode of a conversation that we had, I believe, in October of last year, last week. way back. Yes. <laughs> and in the conversation, you sort of kind of laid out a formula or a path for me to kind of look at how the Internet just works in general, because I'm like, I don't, I'm producing content and I know it could be valuable. I just don't know how to how to point it into the internet somewhere, you know, and you sort of kind of gave me some, some thoughts on that. Um, I'm, I'm kind of wanting to pick up on some of that conversation too, because it, it sort of kind of met together with us. Right. So today, uh, we sort of have a question. I want to, I want us to all kind of bring a question forward and then try to get an answer from each of us for each of our question. Right. So more specifically, uh, today, uh, I guess I'll go with my question first and then I'll get from, uh, from you, Daniel and you, Mark, you kind of give your, give me your, kind of perspective of what I'm what I'm sharing. Um, my question specifically is how my content, how do I capitalize on understanding the analytics? Like where I don't understand how to read analytics correctly, or at least to my advantage, mm-hmm. but I know I'm producing a ton of content. So that's sort of where my struggle is. And where would you guys kind of break that down for me as like a beginner? Give me some like insights as to like, check these two or three points out. Oh, definitely. Um... I think, at least in my experience, sort of the first thing you want to get working, um, I'm sorry, just trying not to get too jargony with any of this, but a top of funnel. Um, so say if what you're doing is just posting, you know, a, a post, um, like how much reach are you getting? How much engagement with that reach? Uh, so not just, you know, likes and that kind of thing, but just like how much is actually happening with it? Is anyone taking the next step further down the funnel? Um, and that funnel changes a million different ways. So you might just have your Instagram funnel and you know 0.05% of that's going to get to the website. And of that, this percentage is going to get to where it's going. Um, But I think the place people can easily get confused and discouraged is when uh, the top of funnel looks like it's doing really well, but what's coming through is not all that successful. So in a lot of that, like with Google Analytics, like really making sure that you're cleaning your uh, traffic as regularly as you can. We had some crazy numbers at uh, the beginning of the year on the website for my company. And I had to f- talk to a consultant because I just could not find it. Um, but it was complete BS traffic. Like it was huge number spikes, things we had never seen. We had done no initiatives to get it. But it was like, okay, no, we've identified that these numbers here actually are not good and they're confusing the story. So we need to figure out how to kind of get back to square one. Like, okay, you know, and a lot of these efforts and a lot of these tactics, you might get bad answers and be like, oh, actually what I'm doing just isn't working. Uh, darn, like shit yeah, at that point. And it's like, okay, now I got to figure that out. But you need to know the true value of the data you're getting, I think is step one. Um, and that's a place, like I've definitely had ads where my ad is performing spectacularly. And I'm like, oh, I love you. You're my little baby ad. Yeah. Like you're going to grow up and be so great. Um, and then I just realized like there's nothing special happening there. And I'm like really discouraged. Um, and it's hard not to get discouraged, I think, because you're throwing so much stuff out there. Um, but it's, you know, there's so many levels of it. Like, is it the content? Is it the platform? Is it, you know, for Instagram is like the hashtags for the website. Is it the SEO? Do you need better visibility there? Um, so yeah, very, I mean, I'm not sure if any of, I I don't want to sit on it for too long, but that's, I think kind of my general overview. Um, if that's helpful. (laughs) Yeah, no, it definitely was. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I got to jump in there, um, bringing it to the, like to the new rail ad or the new, yeah, the new rail ad that you implemented, Zach. Um, That's as simple as like, the first thing I would say to do is just to find your average views for anything that's related. Like what's your average rail ad view viewership and then compare that and then do maybe do the same rail ad you you have or just, you know, recreate it. Just try to get something very similar until you can start building up enough data that you can find that average and then be like, Mm -hmm. Okay, it was really effective. Like it could have been an outlier, it could have been random, but if you go with your gut, you and then you have the data and like the actual the dates, you know, 
um, of post, I think that you could really, you know, make those decisions. Is that A-B testing, but just on like a really simple level. Yeah, and I, I love what you said there, Mark, where you're like, look at the data and then kind of go with your gut. Because it sometimes is a little more art than science. Um, is you have all these important metrics and you do have to inform your decisions. But at a point, like, if you just, if it was just easy enough to optimize for numbers, like there would be AI doing this. I mean, in some places there is, but uh, there would be no human element necessary. And it does take some of that human intuition to figure out how best to ride those waves. But I got a question for you. What, what, maybe on like one hand, what are the metrics that you would first look at? Like, and you can use like, you know, page, uh, page views or likes or hashtags. I like when you were bringing that up because that's what I'm diving into currently is, uh, like especially hashtags for Twitter. Um. Oh, definitely. Um, for me, I haven't done a ton of, uh, I'd say academic work <laughs> on Twitter, um, but uh, recently with, um, cause I also working on a comic book, which is more of a passion project. And so that's where I get to do some of the more like full uh, marketing work now that I get to play with. Cause where I'm at now, I've sort of become, I guess, specialized to the point where I just sort of live in Google and a couple other things, which is a lot less sexy. It's fun to talk with other other people about some of that stuff, but it's it can get real in the weeds real quickly. Um, and a lot of it is just sort of frustrating. <laughs> people banging their heads against it. But uh, for those, for me, it's, it's really just figuring out the, I think the percentage of engagement with any of your content. Like sometimes I've definitely found hashtags. Like when I was playing around with uh, some of the comics posts, cause we're trying to build up an audience before we do crowdfunding. Um, and I found some things that really, you know, would boost the heck out of impressions and reach and just weren't getting that kind of engagement. So it's like, okay, I have found out how to open the floodgate, but it's the wrong floodgate. Um, so, and that's just playing with it. And Zach and I were talking about that recently enough too, where it's like, sometimes you just knock one out of the park and have no idea why. And then you have to figure out if it was an accident, if it was an outlier, or if there's a lesson in there to be learned. I think one thing we found out with the comic, or at least I hope we did, we're going to have to play with it more. But when we posted just a full page of the comic, people seemed to understand what it was more. And some of those hashtags that had previously given us more reach, um, now they were actually giving us better engagement. So it's sort of holding yourself accountable to the actual metrics that matter. Um, is like, it's great. You need to open up the funnel as large as you can. Um, but it's, you know, if you're not getting people to the next step, then it's like, okay, I need to revisit the previous step. Um, and that can be crushing sometimes. <laughs> You'll think, you know, you may have gotten somewhere or like really figured something out and then it might not be that simple. And other times you might've like just posted something and you open your phone later and like, what the heck happened here? Like, why, like, I mean, Zach, you said you yeah. went from like, you six X your reels views over a weekend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was wild. It was wild. Completely out of the box content too. Like something Yeah. I, I imagine I looked at, um, I'll just kind of give you guys a frame of what, what what it was. So my sister launched like this secondhand sort of like curated thrift uh, Instagram shop. And obviously this is Instagram gold. This is Instagram content. This is what people like gawk over when they see like these nice vintage, like, you know, sorts of plates and candles and jars placed up in an artistic way. Right. So yeah, uh, there's a niche audience for that. And I know from being on Instagram, like I look at like cheese boards like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I look at coffee <laughs> mugs like that. <laughs> so, yeah. so I kind of looked at a few similar um, uh, Instagram accounts as to like the content that she would be kind of making. And I just, I just went with like what was hot on the platform and just kind of just used what I knew as like a Instagram user would mm -hmm. catch their eye, the attention, like just putting the product right up front uh, in, in the in the reel and making it fast and making it quick and making it snappy with some music, like a TikTok video almost, right? I wanted to mm -hmm. model the content off that and I, I did that. And and then after the next thing I know, I posted it and then like within like 30 minutes, it had 200 views and I was like, that's not normal. I usually takes two, to, it usually takes a day to get 200 views for a normal reel for me. And then over the course of the day, I seen it reach a thousand and I was like, wow, that's crazy. I never post things like that. It's completely out of my, yeah. my pro production ideas, you know? So, um, but that one would, that one just went crazy, you know? And it was, it, it, it was wild. It was crazy. Another kind of idea yeah. too, that I think kind of came from that was, uh, 
wanting to see if I can produce content that somebody asked me to make, right? If I was someone, if a client asked me to do this for them, how would I make it for them? And that's kind of how I approached it. And it just, it just went. And I was like, wow, that's, that's impressive. So. Yeah. Well, and I think you're also getting at something there, which is very, very interesting is like the more ways you attack this and the more types of either business or content or brand that you play with and work with, you come to such different understandings. Like I'd mentioned the company I work at now does enterprise level software. So those that's easier to find. But, you know, after I've been there for two years now, um, at a certain point, I'm like, I need to refresh on everything else. And someone else that is, you know, living in the trenches on like Instagram or Twitter and doing something else, whether it's like a thrift thing or a podcast, you end up with such different answers to results. Um, and really, it's like playing in a band, you know, like if you're a bass player in 10 different bands, you're going to be a sick bass player because you're playing in different genres. Um, and it ends up like where you kind of find these these niche, uh, niches of how platforms want to work, how the users are expecting them to work. Like you'd mentioned trying to do the TikTok video to see if you could do it for other people. And then just the things you discovered there was some immediate sort of success. And I'm not sure whether that trickled through. Um, or if that's something, if you committed to for a couple of months, like if you did that for three months, you know, where would you be? Um, and these are the, you know, you live at the crossroads of all of these tests at a certain point. And it's like, oh, you know, maybe I don't want to be a TikTok channel, but I'm now interested that I can do it. Yeah, um, exactly. And that kind of thing. Because, you know, at a point when I first started doing Google ads, I remember thinking, I will never write a clickbait ad title. Um, I will write literature as ads and I will get it. And then like, two months later i just see i i threw i wasn't getting what i wanted i was just learning and i finally like put up a a, a clickbait title and it was just like who uh, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. people aren't honest i don't think about how they interact with content on the internet is like people click that shit and now i basically just have to get people to landing pages i'm like i've never talked to a single human in the world who's like oh yeah click on an ad and fill out a, a landing page form like i've never met them but i yeah. convert you know dozens of them daily and it's like, what is this? Who are you people? Um, so I think there's a hidden side to it that people don't like to talk about. Um, is Maybe there's a little shame in there. Or maybe it's like they don't think that it's important. I, I, um, but there's, saying, there's insights to be done there. Make your clickbait and inject your content, right? Make mm -hmm. make the inject your theme. Is that Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Because exactly. um, you can sort of be as, you know, if you want to go as shameless as you can, sure. But everyone, you know, has integrity in their brand and their theme like you're talking about, Mark. So that's, you know, it's finding what like what shortcuts you're willing to put up with and then making them live up to your own standard, I think, to some degree. Because at, at some point, there will just be something that works a little better that you may not want to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you find your spectrum. So yeah. you were describing like. I think we got a little bit away from the like the outlier, right? Like Zach was talking about oh, making yeah. it TikToky, but that's kind of what I'm curious in is is that is that the right mindset, the right approach is to look at your outliers, see what see what's been highly successful, and then have enough like enough posts to be able to determine like oh wait these are these are really similar like these both blew up and they both are clickbaity, right? They have a clickbait title, a clickbait esque title. Is that yeah. and then you can start experimenting. But is that kind of what you're getting at? Like the, the method would be to find the outliers, theorize why they were successful, and then find those connections over time? I Yes. Um, assuming it starts to work. Because, uh, you know, if you start to push on it and then it's such an outlier that there's nothing there, I guess what you're looking for is to see if that outlier can become the new trend or the new standard. Um, and also that's something you want to do. Like, say tomorrow I started a TikTok channel where I twerk on random objects it might do better than something I actually care about, you know, yeah. but maybe <laughs> that stupid, <laughs> that stupid thing does well. Um, but so that's an extreme yeah. example, obviously. <laughs> Don't give me um, ideas, dude. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. You and, and Romeo. Um, <laughs> but so, uh, yeah, obviously that's a joke, but um, so it's trying to find out like what the cool things are you can do that will be successful. Oh, there's the dog. He heard you, dude. He heard you, bro. <laughs> Nice. Um, but yeah, I think the goal is would be to find sort of that new path forward um, and to try to pinpoint it by different projects, um, whether just with outliers. I mean, at a certain point, they have to turn into the new standard. Otherwise, you're uh, it's unsustainable. 
but right. I think I think that can be so that can be so tricky because there's an infinite amount of possibilities. It's like, oh yeah, I could literally do anything now. Like, what is it about um, to be doing? So I, really establishing that that baseline. Like, you know, I, I remember when you started the podcast, Zach, and I was like, I I don't quite know anything about podcasts because um, my first job was like sell to consumers. So it's like I need them to click thing and buy one thing. Easy to do. Like with, with building the podcast, you're building a brand and a community and all this other stuff that takes so much more work. And the the payout is so much more nebulous until you get to like a certain size, right? So it's it becomes very tricky, but depending on what you're really converting for. And I'd say my specialty is, is now with software and with direct-to-consumer uh, retail, but uh, all that other stuff really scares me. And the fact that people have built some of these tremendous like lifestyle brands and stuff out there is always so impressive. <laughs> Sometimes you sort of hate them for it. Other times you're like, damn, that's a really good one. I can't believe someone didn't have that or didn't do that. Like I'm still impressed this day, Zach, you have averagefellas.com. Like I, I just don't get it. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Hey, I, want to, I, want, I want to wrap up my question really quick. Um, I, I, cause I want to, I want to give you, I give, I want to give you guys a chance to, to kind of just bring one to the table. Um, I appreciate the, the the I got a lot to go back with now and really kind of focus in on. You guys will probably see some weird stuff popping up on Instagram if you're if, <laughs> if you're there, but I, I'm excited for that. Um, Mark, you want to toss something out for us, like um, you know, bring something out, something that we can kind of chat on. Um, well, I guess it's more just my question, and it's about like it's about timing and trending. Like we were just talking about, like maybe the twerking goes viral on TikTok, right? Like. What I'm wondering is if you can, and this is what I'm looking into, is how to overlap um, what's currently trending, like in the in the second, right? And like you have that as like you have a database, you get the you get the look just in the top thirty, um, but then connecting all words and like say we use hashtags, and I'm like a new retro wave artist that's into coffee and that, into coffee. That's something that shows up on my website a bunch, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm like using social media to like just you know, hashtag coffee, right? Uh, my idea is that there could be pretty easy way to overlap the top trending words and related words that connect to anything that your content's about. So you could basically do, like I do this in R and I just, you know, like push it to a database, right? But maybe yeah. T is trending and T is semantically similar to, to coffee. Um, and so then you have, you have that, on like a notification to your email and it's like this is popping right now uh okay. this is the timing to make this post i thought about like three weeks ago that was about tea right um mm. that's kind of what i'm curious about is if you can capitalize on what's trending and how much it comes down to timing yes timing and relevance yeah um, no that's I, that's probably the million dollar question or yeah. more than that given given how well some people do on, on the internet okay. Can I toss some practical, like, sort of content-related um, kind of, I guess, knowledge towards this? Uh, I definitely, I try and copy a trend as fast as possible on certain things. And I, kn I do that because I want to be the bigger shark in the pond and be the first person to get mine ranking at the top of that board. And when you do that, you can collect a few extra runoff likes or a few extra runoff interactions, you know, because it's related content to a trend. And I think that there's a golden hour. I believe there's a golden hour in the trending um, that kind of, I think this is, but I just don't, I don't track it. I just know from, I guess, over time of posting thousands of Instagram stuff, like I kind of have an idea of like, oh, I'm too late to the game to this. I can't, if I did this, it would be inauthentic. If I did this now, mm -hmm. like it would be like, it's relatable content. So like um, the because because Instagram wants to promote reels, I should be doing more reels, but I just haven't been doing that. And that's why I was like, hey, I need to start getting on to the reels thing. And because that's all I've heard. All, I've heard a lot about them trying to compete with TikTok. And so what is their answer to TikTok? It's reels. And so timing, if you're not producing reels right now, you're missing out on the extra the extra promotion that the platform has to offer you, right? That's maybe not necessarily the hashtag part of it, but um, mm -hmm. I, the hashtag thing, like if it's 4th of July weekend, 
I know that I need to craft something that has a 4th of July theme in it, right? And then the overflow of coffee, 4th of July meeting on this one. Like here's one coming up. It's 420 is coming up. We all know it. Okay. Everybody knows it. There's going to be an overflow of traffic of Taco Tuesday and 420 because of, do you hear what I'm saying? It's Taco Tuesday on 420 this year. So there's <laughs> hype around that. I, so, I like, mean, that's, that, there you go. <laughs> that's all I got to add. That, is, that, that itself. Is. That itself is good information to have. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, well, I think, and this is interesting because this is sort of, or at least we're all going to go with it, is a slightly different thing. Um, a lot of what we've been fighting with recently in my current company is trying to find the places, the keywords that we can afford to win versus other larger companies. Like, I don't know how one-to-one -one this translates to hashtags, but for like SEO, like if I was trying to compete with the word coffee, I'm I'm never gonna get there because everyone else is bigger in that pond. So you gotta start to figure out, you know, where do you go down the list where you think you can win? And maybe it's, if just using you as an example, Zach, maybe it's like Southern California local coffee or something. There are tons of like services you can look through. I think a lot of them are quite expensive, um, but some of them you can get like, you know, free trials into for like 30 days or something like a SEM rush or, or that kind of thing. And you can start to find some of those words and it's like, okay, well, I know what my monthly traffic is. So say I get a thousand people to the website every month, like that's killer. So I'll find the people like coffee probably has a million, 10 million plus search volume. So if you can get down to places where it's like 500 to 2000 search volume, you know, monthly, those are battles you can probably win. So if you can get those into your headings, like your H1 and your H2, and get it into your meta metadata, those are probably places that might not be as glamorous. Like you might not be winning coffee anymore, but maybe now you're getting three or 500 people who are looking for something like you, who are actively engaging with Google to find something that is exactly like you. Right. And if you can get above the fold page one, you know, that's killer. And I imagine hashtags have to be to some degree similar where you can find what is trending and jump onto it in sort of that golden hour and find like the like the 10th or 20th thing down and maybe see like compare that like compare writing the trends at the bottom of the trend list to writing them at the top and i feel like maybe what you'll see is a lot more noise in those top ones and if you go down to a certain level there might be like uh just sort of a sweet spot of buoyancy where your current uh profile or whatever can be more successful than it would be in other places but that's, that's mostly a theory. That's something I myself need to be testing out and have been yeah. fighting with a little bit on Instagram now. It's like, okay, where can I throw my weight around that it's valid? Because I might be able to get a ton more looks in a place uh, with a prominent hashtag that has huge search volume. But now I'm competing with, in this case, professional comic book artists who are getting hundreds of thousands of likes um, and I'm getting, you know, on a good day, 70. So it's like, it's trying, I think it's trying to find where you can be the big fish in the right pond. And then to scale that pond by pond. That's so interesting. That's true. I mean, scaling that pond, right? That's kind of the big trick yeah. right now. And I kind of, I have like, I have four different Instagram accounts and I've shared this before, but like trying to determine what works in between to like move the marker between three to 500 Instagram followers or what moves the marker between 100 to 300 Instagram followers and like, it's just been a really interesting kind of idea and world. So like, I think oh, yeah. kind of like what the, what you're talking about, Mark, like I, I mean, obviously we need to, I need to learn how to code something, right? <laughs> 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 because that would definitely create, create the tool. I mean, I'm sure I can find one on GitHub, right? I'm sure I could find something on GitHub where I could just plug some values in in Python and, and you know, rip something off the internet somewhere. But I, um, but so implementing a tool like that, right? Trying to take those gut instincts that you're kind of talking about, Daniel, and then like merging them together. I'm, I know I'm a content producer and like, but like at the end of the day, like I want to do what I love. So it would work, it would benefit me to like learn how to use this system to promote my something, my coffee, my podcast, my services, my internet services, right? So, well, yeah. um, well, and I suppose that an easy one or not an easy one, but like a baseline one for you is like, you know, set sort of a, a tangible, simple coffee sales goal 
and just sort of target that for a minute. And once you get that to a place where it's keeping everything else afloat, like then you start really poking out and trying to find the ways to like, okay, how do I start getting people into the content service? Cause now you've got that awesome studio. Um, but like, maybe you just try to like nail in the coffee thing for a second. And then the podcast is going to be just a full cultural ecosystem around what you're doing. So, so never lose that. Always keep this going. Cause that really unifies it all and gives you like a cool story and a great narrative um, that with the YouTube channel and everything. Like, I feel like once you can find some of these repeatable moments of success that you can start, uh, you know, b building on them and accelerating them. I, I totally agree, man. It's this kind of came you, I think this is a, I'm sure, I'm, I'm not sure what you guys are, or how you guys are feeling on time right now. You guys, um, I got, I got about five to 10. Okay. 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 So, uh, real quick, um, I'm not sure if we answered anything that you were looking for, Mark. I'm sorry, man. I know we kind of got carried away. Yeah, in I'm, topic. I'm more interested. I want to hear about the SEO because I, okay. I've never thought of that, but that's such a perfect analogy of, you know, attack, attack the battles you can fight. I never even saw them as battles. I assumed, okay, hop on the bandwagon. Like, let's go to this end of the extreme. Maybe it's not mm -hmm. the same. Maybe in that way, keywords and like hashtags aren't comparable, right? Because you're not, I don't know if you're fighting the same type of battle on social media that you are with just search results. But I really yeah. like the idea of finding all, all keywords related to coffee, right? Getting them there and then getting the, um, I don't know what metric it would be, but seeing, being able to measure the battle. Right. And then being like, mm -hmm. okay, I own coffee, but I own, I don't know, coffee grounds, specifically yeah. coffee. Right. That's it, yeah, that if, if you can get one of those tools, like uh, I'm blanking on some of the other names, but like SEM Rush and just tie that all into Google Search Console, it has like a really effective way to see sort of what pages of yours are ranking, what page on Google they're ranking on. Because like you just said, uh, how social media, the hashtag battle is certainly different in some way, um, is because. You know, on Instagram, you might scroll for 20 minutes, but on Google, like if you're on the third page of Google, man, like what the hell has gone wrong? Where have you turned? Right. You know, exactly. so that definitely there's there's definitely more to it than that. And that's something I wish I, I knew more about. But um, I think at least monitoring it through web traffic can be pretty straightforward. But yeah, winning that hashtag battle on like Instagram or Twitter, that's yeah, I, I wish I had the answer to that one. <laughs> So recently I launched a blog for the average fellows, right? And I'm trying to pick up on Google SEO traffic. Okay. And this mm -hmm. kind of ties in real quick with the whole entire real estate idea of traffic. Mark, you're talking about like, you're talking about, um, you're just, uh, I don't know how to tie this. I'm just going to, let me put this out there for you guys real quick. So the city of coffee, the, you know, the top of the pyramid is coffee, right? And then like the outskirts of the neighborhood is coffee grounds <laughs> or fine coffee grounds, right? And so my, my, my strategy right now is I'm trying to blog about something that's related to my thing. I'm, I launched a coffee service and I'm trying to get keywords of coffee, fine coffee grounds are local coffee brewer, local, you know, something, something like that, right? And I, I'll mention Southern California, Paris, California specifically. I'll ma mention the, these words in the blog. Cause I'm trying to teach Google or show Google that there's something there. Right. And I'm not necessarily sure like what Google's like reading. I'm sure it's probably reading it all, but what it's really putting down is like, these are key indicators and mm. whatever. Um, but that's part of the battle that I'm trying to fight now. Right. That's a, that's an area that I've kind of, I've come to this conclusion that I need to start blogging to win this traffic area. And I need to put keywords in there related to me with my web address. Cause I want that to come to me, not to anybody else. Right. That sort of the strategy we're talking about with the hashtags. Daniel, you want to kind of like talk on that a little bit, maybe? Because that's sort of like in that wheelhouse, sort of. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think just getting it locked down takes a lot of work. Um, and you end up, I mean, like some, I believe like Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, is a great little plugin. I WordPress has it. I think a lot of other places do. And it's just a real quick sort of best practices SEO thing. It'll just be like, you know, sentences over 20 words, don't do it, um, or try not to. I mean, obviously everyone's gonna have their own kind of brand, um, but don't have paragraphs that are too long, have headings in between things. Make sure what appears in the metadata and the H1 heading and the H2 heading, that there's some sort of relationship there. Um, and it just sort of checks you on a lot of things. Sometimes it'll get stubborn and it won't let you, it won't agree with you and you're like, no, nah, I know this is working. Um, but finding a little tool like that can be so helpful just to start getting into the, the basics of it. 
Um, and I think for anyone sort of interested, that's a wonderful place to start. But it is something like once you create this content, Zach, you and I have talked about this a couple of times. Once it's on the internet, it's just like, can you teach Google to find it? Um, and how can you be indexed by it in the most effective way? And there are other things that are just like technical problems. You can go through Google and see like, oh, the images on my website need to be, uh, you know, optimized. They're too big. It's not working well on mobile. It's not working well on desktop. How do I find this? Am I getting too much spam traffic through bots or something? That's going to make me look bad. Um, there's all these little ways you can start to like tighten the screws because um, it's not just keywords. It can also it's also a technical aspect. Yeah, you know, like what is what is where? Where are the links to my site? Where are the links to my site going? Do I have any 404 pages? Any non-indexed pages? Sometimes your web uh, design platform or whatever will just like create random shit pages that don't lead to anywhere and Google sees as harmful to yourself. Um, and it's just all these little things and it becomes such sort of a rich ecosystem. It's a you know full-time job of multiple people at larger companies to make this stuff happen. And it all has to align with content. So I think that sort of ties it back to some of what we've been talking about is like, how do you ride what's trending? How do you commit to your own brand? How do you make it technically visible to the systems it needs to be technically visible to? And then how do you make that repeatable and scalable? And if there was a simple answer to that, you know, everyone would do it. <laughs> so I think some of the gut, in, yeah, some of the gut intuition comes back in there. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's the wild west. Uh, still is somehow like 30 years into the internet, you know? <laughs> now, everything you were just describing, the, the, specifically the formatting, that sounds like this analogy that's like paving the road in the city that, that was once gravel, right? But just paving yeah. the road that looks like all the other roads and it leads to your house party. Right. Definitely. I think that's the analogy we went with last time, but you said it was Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T. Yeah, and, and it's a, a pretty straightforward SEO plugin. Um, I think a lot of places have it. Okay. Uh, I've used it on WordPress. It's, you know, it's not the end-all be-all, but it's such a good start down that road. Um, at Espressa, I work with a consultant who does just like SEO. And when she, uh, I think she actually shared with us something I can share with, with both of you um, that she's trying to get out there. And um, some of the technical stuff that she was finding was just so outside my wheelhouse because I'm, I live in the little part of the internet I live in. Um, and it was just really impressive. And I wish I had a little bit more to say on it um, specifically, but it was something I myself am just learning about. Um, so yeah, I think I've, I've got a document around there I can dig up and maybe send your guys' way, but, um, yeah. and maybe it can inform some discussions for later podcasts. Definitely, cool. man. I got a split, guys. All right, man. Well, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate it. It was great meeting you, Mark. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's been real. We'll talk next time. Definitely. See ya. Appreciate you, man. Have a good Take one. Care. Hey, uh, Daniel, I really appreciate you jumping on the podcast, man. This was really cool. I'm, just a lot of like cool stuff to chat about, man. Like it's been a while and I know like, my wife's like, oh my God, it's like, stop talking to me about that. I don't, I don't want to listen to him. Like, who do I get? Who do I nerd out about with this? You know? So, uh, I really yeah, it's, it's, it is such a nerdy thing and I, I do enjoy it. And I'm, I've been glad that you and I have been able to talk about it so much recently. Definitely. And I hope, cause it, it it's nice that I like don't actually know any of the answers to sort of your specific problems. <laughs> it's really fun to like actually go back and forth because I wish I was almost in a more consulting role because it's so much fun to learn a little bit about everything because it really just opens up your mind to it so much quicker than just coming at it from one direction with a hammer and a chisel. Definitely, man. That's why I thought like this kind of like ecosystem, begin the conversation going, just tossing out ideas, right? Hearing it. Like I got a lot of feedback to go, to go back and like clean stuff up. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and Mark was talking about programming things to aggregate stuff and crunch them in. Like, I'm just like, I, I need to take a class on whatever the hell that is about specifically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, definitely, um, definitely I, man. Okay. So yeah, hopefully we can do some more of these going forward, man. Yeah, Very so we're, we're trying to do this about every two weeks. Uh, we're trying to do this every two weeks, just kind of a working lunch chat real quick, you know, get it, kind of get it in real quick and, and spit those ideas around. Hopefully we can help each other with those problems. Um, but every other week we're going to try including these. I think I'm going to keep uh, spl uh, cutting up our conversation that we had on in October of okay. last year, man. And uh, I'm just showing the people how the sausage is made. And it's literally – It also it's a refresher for me because, I mean, also with all – like we were talking about Google blogging kind of stuff, SEO traffic – all these little nuggets of like, whatever it is, this is sort of like my like way of ref keeping myself, um, you know, afloat and like remembering what I've learned. So chopping oh, yeah. old it, stuff it, up, man. It helps me too. <laughs> it helps me too. <laughs> 
Awesome, man. Hey, so I'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and sign off here. Any last words before we sign off to, uh, today, man? Uh, get average fellows coffee. It's fantastic. <laughs> thank, you so, th- thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Um, so once again, guys, thank you for listening to the Average Fellows podcast. Drop by the website www.averagefellows.com for your specialty craft roast coffee or any of your web solution needs. If you need a graphic, maybe you need a product. But remember, we just built out the studio, so we're getting some more content put together for that. But um, so we can do product graphics, product photography, you name it. We're, 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 we're trying to get it out there. Anyways, uh, once again, drop by the website, guys. Peace and love. Awesome, man.